Hey everybody, welcome to The Beer Kitchen. I'm your host as always, Mike. Like I do with every show, I want to start by thanking my subscribers, Jim and Pam. Thank you so much for watching day after day. I thought we would bring on a guest. So, uh, come on up. Yeah. Hey. So this here is, uh... I'm Beer Brief. I almost have... 170 subscribers. Safe to say this guy knows what he's talking about when it comes to beer. And the reason I brought him on specifically is because what Anton's doing is he's getting in down and dirty with what the kids are doing nowadays. So uh, he's gonna teach me a bit about those beers and we're gonna teach you how to make a DIY beer at home. Isn't that right, Anton? That, that is 100% true. Tell me about the IPA. You gotta start with the I first. Now the IPA stands for the India Pale Ale, and that's a, you know, East India Trading Companies used to um, smuggle this across Asia back in, you know, the 1600s. Beer you know, this all sounds very confusing. I think we should start by popping open a beer and actually getting our fists into the, into the hops, if you know what I'm saying. Uh-huh. I don't know what you're saying. I don't, I don't know what that means. Lately, these these breweries, these micro, uh, even nano breweries now, have taken the IPA game a complete further step. We're gonna go beyond the nano. We're gonna go into the quantum. We're gonna do some quantum brewing today. And this is a beer by beer basis is what I'm talking about. What you might be used to when it comes to homemade beer is some cheap kit like this. And basically, you know, it comes with some ingredients, some hops, some, Yeasts, the cannabinoids, the caffeine. That process just takes weeks and weeks and weeks and you know. I'm what not, if I want to be right now? That's why I'm here. I'm, I'm here to show you simple three steps to making a hazy IPA. Three right steps. Right here in this kitchen. Hazy quantum IPA. Brewing it on the spot. Here on the beer kitchen. Beer kitchen. First of all, why don't you show me what a, a regular hazy beer looks like? so that we can kind of get a base ground of what we're trying to replicate here. So this is a big looking beer here. <laughs> I mean, it's one of the hazy IPAs that I got from a local brewery and it's, uh, it's a crowler, so it's gonna be 32 ounces of pure hazy beer. You'll find that with a lot of uh, just IPAs in general, they hover around 7%, that's gonna be their, their natural um, <laughs> hovering range. There are deviations though that you will find in the beer game, Mike. Okay. I'm gonna tell you that. I'm gonna open this can. I, I just opened this can. Fresh pop. And uh, I'm gonna pour you first now. I'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna do you first. Is, right. is this on film? Yeah, it's being pour. Okay. Now this is gonna be one of those hazy IPAs that we're, I introduced to you. Um, this one specifically is conditioned with apricots. They're, they're a tree fruit. Take a look at this beverage. Does that, does that look like... Are we gonna drink this? We should drink it. I mean, here, I'll, let me... You, are you gonna pour for me? Yeah, the angle is key. It, it refreshes the beer. It gets a lot of aromatics in there and a See, lot of... Uh, this is what I talk about with when it comes to like new age and traditional, because I'm used to drinking beer I, out of the I can. You're good there. You... Well, that's just what's called a head sun. See, there's some <laughs> things that I think you still gotta know about. See how this doesn't have anything in it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you just... Okay. Gotta give it a little bit of a, a whip it up. Cheers, Anton. Cheers. Oh. Well, you know what? I have to say my eyes are open today because this is a delicious tasting drink. What actually makes this a beer? They have the beer in there, and then it's uh, the also the, the fruit that makes it kind of, you know, hazy. And, you know, Mike, it took the brewers... Months, or a month or so. <laughs> what if I told you I could make one of these for us right now within the next three minutes? That would be incredible. And it tastes better than that. Yeah, so you're, you're gonna wanna get just a 12 ounce light beer. Um, and it's important it's 12 ounces, you, you, and I'll explain why later, but it's, it's just got to be a light beer or something just, you know, to get that beer taste down. Now the real uh, star of the show, I guess, is this guy right here, right? Yes, and now that's going to be orange juice. Alright, so now I'm cracking open my, my light beer here. I'm going to pour it into this, and we're just going to give it a 
And we're going to give it straight a, up pour a it. good pour. It's going to foam up a lot and you want that foam. So now we got 12 ounces of beer in this sure. cup, right? Easy enough. You can agree with it, I can agree with it. It says it right here on my 12 ounce can that it's 12 ounces. And it looks like that's about 370 milliliters. So I'm gonna go ahead and Mike, I'm gonna do, cause I want my beer a little, I'll explain, but I'm gonna do three and a half. And look at this, you're gonna pour, you're gonna pour, you're gonna take your orange juice. Orange juice. And pour it straight into. Mm. Cheap old beer. Your regular beer, and look at that. Look at that, hold on a second. These already look almost identical. They're, they're gonna look a lot alike, Okay, Mike. And so you got the hazy aesthetic, you got the hazy look, right? Why don't you grab me our last ingredient in there and you're gonna find um, some hard alcohol in there, Mike. That last ingredient is gonna really be the key to making this a perfect DIY hazy. So we're gonna pour that in there. That's one and a half ounces and this is gonna make us, if my math is right, this is gonna put us Right above 16. 16. Now, in order to calculate the percentage, you know, because this is probably 30%, and we're adding it to a certain amount of fluid, and... <laughs> hey, let me finish this off for you. You just put three different ingredients in there. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna wanna stir them up, you're gonna wanna, you know, get everything all... Mixed. Should we use a stirring tool? Yeah. I would definitely incorporate one of those stirring tools. That's all I've got is those tongs. Okay, let's stir it. And you're gonna be my taste tester um, because you're the one that you know has never had this before. Great. I do this every day. You know, it's all about the quantum brewing these days, and this is really, really niche. You're gonna find this only in a couple communities. So, all right. Um, are you gonna pour it? Should I so pour no, it? I'll pour it for you. Um, it's because, a good idea. You know, I'm I'm the the quantum brewer here, so I'm gonna pour it for you. It should smell like a little bit like beer. It should smell a little bit like orange juice and somewhat like vodka. Yep, I've got those notes. Mm -hmm. It's playing a beautiful song. All right, so here it is. My very first Quantum Hazy IPA. Let's go, let's go down the hatch. <clears throat> so what do you think there, Mike? You're taking a lot of sips. This is amazing. Wow, Anton, you've really whipped something up here. I gotta say, there's very little difference between these two beers. And tell me about like the the feeling. Was it was it more alcoholic, less alcoholic? Could you taste any alcohol? Kind of like it kind of reminds me of childhood. Uh, so that's a hazy. Yeah, that's a hazy. Um, Do you want some? I'm gonna make my own batch. Now let me just top you off here with the rest of the 16 ounces. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're gonna try one of these? Uh, <laughs> so here we've got a Bex. This is another light beer. One of my favorites. You guys have seen it on this channel. This is a German beer, you know. Germans are the kings of beer. They're the dictators of beer, some might even say. Now this is still 12 ounces, right? So it doesn't matter if it's in a bottle. It doesn't matter, but can. I'm not gonna go all 12. Um, for mine. Okay. What I want to do, I'm really into the the look of the beer. I don't really care much about the taste. I'm all about the look. So I'm gonna put a little more orange juice in mine. And that's just kind of a personal choice. And that's that's what I love about this type of recipe is there's so much variety. Didn't there, give me that choice. There is just a lot of variety, Mike. And I didn't give you that choice, but you know, you didn't really voice much of a choice. And what you're gonna see here is that mine's gonna be a lot more hazy than yours. This is what we call in the beer world a double IPA. Okay. And um, if you're gonna reach in there, I, I want you to grab me something else. It's because you can use vodka. But I also wanna encourage everyone to get creative. And so my personal choice, I'm gonna go with something called gin. And the unique feature about gin is that it's got a lot of herbs in it. It's gonna give you more of a, uh, more of an IPA type of taste. And now, aren't you worried that the gin is gonna turn the beer blue? The gin itself is not blue. Um, as much as you might think that or want to think that, that might be a, I'd like to see that. I mean, fucking flies. And we're gonna go in there. And then, I'm gonna stir it. Fun fact, 16 ounces is two cups. I just read that on the Pyrex. <laughs> Interesting. This one looks a little bit lighter. I guess that's the 
The ratios, right? The ratios, yeah. This is your show. Oh yeah, that's good. Get groovy with it, you know, just kind of mix it up, see what works for you. Um, what different ratios, different hard alcohols, different base beers. Now I heard there's different a- Different juices, everything. There's a triple IPA, right? Has anyone taken it further? There have been reports of quadruple. We're gonna make the world's first sextuple IPA. In the same way that beers often combine hops, I feel like we can combine hard alcohols to create a kind of new flavor exactly. profile. So we're gonna use the gin, we're gonna use the vodka, and you know what? Fuck it. Casadores, my friend. <laughs> this is it. You're watching Beer Kitchen. Subscribe, bitches. This is a six tuple IPA. It's good. It's good. <laughs> this is nearly equal parts beer and vodka. Exactly. Tequila, You're gonna want an equal part gin. It on the size tuple IPA. We're just gonna go. Oh, there it goes. And you gotta get that haze in there. So two ounces. And look at that. Beautiful. Just like that, it's a hazy IPA. Just like that? It never blows my mind. A little bit of orange juice, hazy IPA. And that's the thing that, I think that's the main takeaway from the day. Yep. Anton's gonna be our guest of honor here. He's gonna be the first man in the world to ever try this. So I'm gonna drink it. Uh, this is really happening. History in the making. Everyone's gonna wanna do this. Um, well, the thing is, this is a special Stein. Cheers. Oh shit, that's, <laughs> that's glorious, man. Wow. I gotta say, I've had a lot of beers from a lot of different breweries, but this is probably the best beer. You know, that's pretty much what I expected a sextuple IPA to taste like. Yes. Fucking vodka. My grandfather's ashes were stored in this thing for several years. This is cost efficient, taste efficient, fresh. I'm, I'm so psyched, Mike. I think Anton's gonna chug the sextuple right now. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to see that, wouldn't you like to see that, Mike? Um, now here's the main thing I want, there's, here's something I even want to put on your viewers is that Put it on the plate, pal. Orange juice, you could just make it yourself. Now we're gonna do a blind taste test. We've had all these beers, we've enjoyed them all, but the question is how closely did we replicate the original Hazy IPA and would the average person be able to notice the difference? Well. Thanks for having me. Yeah. There he goes. All right, so uh, I've brought in my neighbor, Pablito. Your dad. Um, this is a blind taste test, and Pablito is actually blind from birth, so this is the most accurate blind taste test that we could do. He's mute, he cannot speak either, so we won't be able to communicate, but we'll know he's blind, so we've got that much going for us. So. Here are the three beers, which we already know. He has no idea. We're gonna go ahead and get started with beer number one. So go ahead. No, sorry. Right here. Go ahead and give this a sip and then tell us your rating. How good is this beer? <laughs> he seems to be having some kind of a reaction but I won't know what it is until he holds up the number of fingers. <laughs> the two! All right, Pablito, here's beer number two. Ah, he likes that one. Five, that's five. All right, so now we're gonna top it off with our final beer. There's one last one right here. Give that one a shot. <laughs> he loves it. <laughs> 10, it's a 10. All right, you can go now. So there you have it. 
Our homemade hazy IPA is two and a half times better than the actual store-bought IPA. And our newest sextuple IPA blows them all away. Thanks for joining me here on the Beer Kitchen. It's been a great having you, and I'll see you next time.